Rex Patrick, Centre Alliance Senator. Rex, thank you for your time. Good morning. Now, the coronavirus, it is really concerning. Uh, do you think the government's doing enough to mitigate the risks against the economy? Looks like we're not going to see our budget surplus as promised. Look, I think we need to be proportionate in our response to coronavirus. It's very important to make sure that we uh, safeguard the health of Australians, but we also need to be mindful of uh, the, the harm to our uh, economic acti activity. So, um, look, I think the measures that the government have put in place now are solid. I think they're perhaps a little bit late in, in, in uh, putting them in place. Th there is some room for adjustment. Uh, I think there, there is the ability to have people coming to Australia, provided they are screened, and, and perhaps coming from, uh, from known air or selected airports and to selected airports in here in Australia where we have uh, facilities to be able to screen them properly, so say Sydney and Melbourne, for example. Oh, so you think we should be lifting the travel ban? No, I think that uh, we, we should be uh, careful about who we uh, allow in at this stage. Uh, if people are healthy uh, and can be shown to be healthy and they have a need to come here, then, uh, then we should be open to that. But once again, there should be strict controls uh, and a screening in place before we permit that to happen. Now, if we look at the... Um the family violence issues that we've seen come up in um, particular in response to this incident in Brisbane. You want to start a domestic violence inquiry. That's already had the support of Labor, hasn't it? OK, so yes, uh, I was uh, quite upset about what happened uh, last week, as I think most Australians were, and we saw the Parliament responding to that. Um, it's my view that uh, we need to have a quick look at how the national plan is operating, to look t and see where uh, things are being done well, that perhaps more funding ought to be injected into th those areas where things are not working well, and where things uh, uh, are, are being missed, where there are things that could be done that are not being done. We've done a number of inquiries into domestic violence and we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We understand the dimension of the problem. We know. Uh, what causes uh, domestic violence, we know what the contributing factors are, we know what the effects are, we know the effects uh, on, on families, on uh, health, on uh, financial uh, matters and also indeed on, on the community. We understand all of that. Not, uh, not uh, a bad idea, however, to have a quick snapshot look at how we could be doing uh, some things better. I, uh, I have had indications from both the Coalition and from uh, Labor that they will support a short inquiry. There you go. That would be quite a development. If we can ask about um, your comments on China in particular after Mike Burgess's speech uh, from... It was quite open speech from ASIO. They were talking about foreign interference. Both sides of politics have been reluctant to name China as the biggest threat in foreign interference. Do you think that that's starting to take its toll? Oh, look, I think it... It's time that we did name the, the state player that is uh, uh, interfering uh, from a political perspective or indeed is engaging in uh, some of these activities. Uh, that it's, not, it's not uncommon for that to occur. Our Five Eyes partners do that. So the US have called out who the, who the state actor is, uh, Canada. The Czech Republic has made a fairly strong... Uh, fairly strong statements have been made. And I think what that does is, A, uh, increase public awareness as to where these uh, threats are coming from and how they're coming. And, indeed, it puts pressure back on the state player. And, and look, I think it's reasonable to assume that it is China uh, for them to... Uh, adjust their conduct. Isn't there a risk to doing that though? They're our biggest trading partner and they're, they're notoriously obsessed with face and how they come across on the international stage. So if you offend them, we could lose a lot of money. Look, I think uh, uh, trade is a two-way street. It benefits both parties. Uh, I think our dependence on China is, uh, is, is too high and I'm actually quite pleased that Simon Birmingham is uh, in India this week looking at uh, perhaps uh, diversifying uh, our, our trade links. Uh, but but um, I, I think when people do the wrong thing, when they uh, act in a way that's inconsistent with the way in which we uh, would expect others to act, we should call it out. And uh, final topic, this full cycle docking contract. We know it's incredibly contentious for South Australia. WA wants it. And do you think uh, Labor's kind of turning a blind eye to it? Well, I put up a motion in the Senate, uh, Senate yesterday. It was a fairly measured motion that simply explained uh, uh, why uh, it's not a good idea to shift uh, full cycle dockings, why it's not in the national interest, uh, and uh, asked for the Senate to call on the government to support the retention of the full cycle docking activities in South Australia. Now, interestingly, interestingly both the Coalition and uh, Labor uh, uh, 
uh, did not support the motion. Uh, and that's interesting. So. Uh, Peter Malinowskis in uh, South Australia, the opposition leader, mm. Labor opposition leader, has been very strong on this issue and indeed has now released a press uh, release this morning quite disappointed with Penny Wong and her team in the Senate for not standing up for South Australia. So do, isn't there something that should go through defence industry portfolio though, that the decision should be made just on the basis of um, what's going to be the best deal for the Australian Defence Force about? Oh, look, it, it is all about national security. And, and we had a situation in 2011 where we couldn't put one single submarine to sea, Collins class submarine. We've managed to fix that, and now the Coalition wants to dismantle uh, the very good arrangements that we have in place and shift them across the Nullarbor to Western Australia. We're going to pay a billion dollars to shift something that is working. Uh, I can think of many more things you could spend that billion dollars on uh, that would be more worthwhile. All I was doing was asking the Senate to, uh, to appreciate that. Uh, look, defence does have a, 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 um, a say in all of this, uh, but uh, we also need to examine this from is it, does it represent value for money? Do we think it uh, serves the national interest? And uh, in my strong view, it simply doesn't. Couldn't you make the argument, though, that we paid almost the same amount of money to shift the submarine maintenance to Adelaide in the first place to boost their jobs. WA needs the support now. They're going through a downturn, mining downturn. They need jobs too. OK, so the situation is that uh, the Collins-class submarines were built in South Australia. That's where the expertise li uh, lies. And uh, th that full cycle docking work has always been in South Australia. We did shift some work across to Western Australia where it made sense, and that's the short-term servicing of submarines so, not, so that they don't have to travel very far. Uh, uh, in relation to full cycle dockings, that's completely different work to, to a servicing activity. Uh, we, we send the submarine across the uh, a Great Australian Bight. Uh, it take, that's a, a, about a four-day journey. It happens once every two years, and, and the submarine is stripped uh, completely and then put back together so that it basically is a brand new submarine. Well, we wait with anticipation this decision, Rex Patrick. Thank you for your time. Thank you.